What up, y'all? DC Fago Guy. Welcome to the very first ever Flavor of the Month. This is a new series that I've been toying with doing. I've kind of done these videos before, similarly. At the end of the year, I typically will do a top albums of the year video. Um, and I think I've done one or two now where it was the albums I missed. And I know I definitely did one for 2023. And it was more or less me going over and giving like a quick review over albums that I listened to but didn't do a review for. And rather than wait for the end of the year and do that, I want to make a more condensed version of it. And that is what this is going to be. Basically, any albums that I listen to during the month, if they're brand new, I want to specify brand new because I don't want to really make a video talking about old albums. And maybe we will eventually. Maybe it'll be like a throwback flavor. Of, of, of old stuff that I've listened to and what I liked about it, things like that. But I figured this is a way for me to shine a light on music I'm listening to. Maybe I just didn't drop a review for it. Um, you know, maybe I listened to it one time, didn't care for it. I typically try to only review things that I like. I feel like it's better to talk more positively about things. And if, if someone isn't enjoying something, then I don't think there's really anything positive wise they can say in a review. And that's just not the kind of reviews I've ever wanted to do. But at least with this series, I could say, hey, I listened to it. This is what I didn't like about it. And that way people can go forward knowing like, hey, he gave it a try. He didn't care for it. And who knows? Down the road, maybe I listen to an album again. Absolutely love it. Drop a review that is completely different than what happens in Flavor of the Month. But this is a new series that I did want to start because there's a lot of shit this year so far that I've listened to, but I haven't done reviews for. So this is going to kind of make it up for that. So for this first episode, I am going to go back to the beginning of the year. But going forward, it, Flavor of the Month is only going to be the new albums that dropped that I listened to. And if at the end of July there's not a lot of albums that came out, and there's a lot of older albums that I listened to, maybe we can do, kind of like I said, throwback flavors and talk about albums that I listened to that were not new. But jumping right into it, at the very top of it, we have Fire and Lead, which is Lex the Hex Master, and it was produced by, I believe, Jake Palumbo is the name? Yes, Jake Palumbo is the name. So this album here, it dropped back in January, on January 12th, 2024. Uh, it dropped right before Super Famous Fun Time Guys dropped. And I did give it a couple of spins. And honestly, I did not dislike what I heard. There were definitely some really good tracks on there. Uh, I think one of the really standout ones for me was Rockin' and Rollin' was one that I really enjoyed. Um, I think Burn It Down might have been one that I enjoyed as well. Uh, again, it dropped right before the Super Famous Fun Time guys came out. So for me, once they hit, everything else didn't matter. There's only one other album that dropped around that time that actually caught my attention. And I think that that's really going to surprise people. But Fire and Lead from Lex Tex Master, this... It was independently released. Since this has come out, it's been revealed that Lex is actually signed now to Lyrical Snuff Productions. He has left Magic Ninja Entertainment. Um, but Fire and Lead, I thought, was a really good album. And in the past, I've tried to listen to Lex the Hexmaster, and it's just never really been significantly stand out. Um, I have not revisited it since then. You know, Super Famous came out. I listened to the shit out of that. It's basically been in my top five albums of the year since... You know, since it came out, it's probably going to be easily a contender for number one for the year. But uh, Fire and Lead, Lex Dex Master, I did listen to it, and I did not dislike it. I did not dislike it. It just, I think it had bad timing. And again, I've always kind of struggled a little bit with listening to Lex Dex Master. I think it's his delivery is is not quite clicking with me. The way that he flows on beats just doesn't quite click with me. But there was definitely some on Fire and Lead that I did enjoy. Uh, and then the biggest surprise that I think is going to shock everybody. This album dropped days after the Super Famous Fun Time Guys album. I'll tell you what I want to laugh by laughing. And I've actually seen a lot of bad reviews for this album. And I actually really kind of liked it. I'm talking about Ouija Max Corrupt This Album. It dropped at Juggle Ohio 2. On, on the 19th of January, this album was different. And again, I've seen people say they don't like it. I've seen Ouija Max, uh, Ouija Mac fans say that they absolutely hated it. And of course, you know, any person who hates Ouija Mac 
immediately hated it. And I've always been on the fence with Ouija Mac. I think he's put out some stuff that I've enjoyed, that he's put out a lot of stuff that I did not enjoy. Uh, for me, Ouija, Ouija Mac is just not my cup of tea. It's not a style that I particularly ever really cared for. It's just not a sound that I really care for. It's not that I hate it. It's just I don't like it. So I don't always listen to it. But Corruptus dropped and I gave it an honest listen and I was absolutely blown away by all the harmonizing throughout that album. Actually, the ones that I, the, the tracks on there that I didn't really care for were the ones where he wasn't really doing that. I can tell that this album was very experimental from him. Uh, I think I remember hearing people, some say, um, and I could be miscorrect, I could be incorrect on saying this, and I may be misspeaking, but I, f I feel like I remember seeing people say that at Juggle Ohio 2, he performed some of these tracks and he seemed kind of nervous to do so. I'm not sure how the reception would be. But I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, Corrosion in C major, fucking um, To Say Goodbye. There's a lot of really good songs on there where he's harmonizing, and I actually really like that. I enjoy that kind of shit. And I know I've talked about Corruptus a little bit in a previous video before. Corruptus actually made me go back and listen to Low Key's Eyes of Parasuva on like repeat. It's another, it's an album that's very similar as far as experimenting goes. Those are the kind of things that I like. I don't want just the same old shit. I like it when artists experiment, and I like it when artists experiment well. And I think Ouija Mac did very well with Corruptus. And I actually really enjoyed that album a lot. I don't know why I never did the review for it. Um, I think after a certain point, I kind of listened to it, and then I kind of moved on from it. But when I listened to it, I did not dislike any of the things I heard. Besides, there was... I did not care for how many times. Just did not care for the way that that song came out. Just... I just did not. It made me want to go listen to the original more than anything. So I think Ouija Mac kind of does that where he's kind of, you know, he's trying to pay homage to the clowns. But when he does it, it makes me just want to go listen to the clowns, which could be good because I know he's bringing in a lot of new fans. And I think it's important for them to venture back to the past and listen to old psychopathic records. And when I say that, I mean everybody and not just immediately shun twisted and all that because that's what they're told to do. But uh, yeah, Corruptus, I really enjoyed it. I, I kind of commend Ouija Mac for experimenting. And it was something that really stood out to me and I liked it quite a bit. Uh, people are probably gonna roast me for that one, but it definitely was something that I enjoyed. Um, another one that came out, this one dropped in February on Valentine's Day. I did not expect this release at all. But Mayday put out The Thinnest Line Part 3. If you don't know, this is like their little EPs they put out every so often on Valentine's Day. They're supposed to be like love songs and things like that. And if you are not new to the channel, you know I am a, a very big fan of Mayday. But when this dropped, I was just consumed by so many other projects that have, you know, had come out. Uh, I gave it one listen. I didn't hate it, but I also, again, was so, so distracted by other stuff that I just wasn't in mayday mode i wasn't on the right channel to listen to mayday uh, i gave it one spin again it wasn't terrible i didn't hate it uh, it, it was just kind of there for me but uh, thinnest line part three it dropped and i gave it one listen jumping from there this is another artist that's been like on my radar just because he's rubbing elbows with long live evil a lot he was at axmas most recently he was just at camp zool i did miss his set um I have my reasons. If you haven't watched my live review with Megs on why that was, you can go check that out to find out more about that. But when his album dropped, uh, Keegan Grimm, I should probably specify, when Keegan Grimm dropped Gospel back in February, it honestly was just a very bad time. I've left it in my, I've left it on my library on Apple Music with full intention of going back when the time is right to give this a proper listen. I've given it one full spin and maybe half of a spin. Um, I drive a lot where I work, so typically before I make a long trip, I will just make a playlist of, of stuff to listen to. And so Gospel was on there. I did give it one listen, but on my trip back, I basically decided to make another playlist with it not on there. And I don't want to say that's any disrespect to Keith. I don't want to say that with any kind of disrespect to Keith and Grimm. It's just at that time, 
was when Batty Bat's Fall from Grace came out. Monoxide had just dropped Chainsmoker 2. And I very much gravitated to Chainsmoker 2 over Keegan Grimm's Gospel. Um, what I had heard, I really did like. And there was one song that I've gone back and revisited more than the main album itself. And that is Arson Wells. I absolutely love that song. Uh, Keegan Grimm has a very deep scum-like voice. You know, it's very horrorcore sounding. And maybe I just wasn't in the right mode for that at the time. Again, Batty Bat's Fall from Grace just fully fucking came out. And I was fully in that mode. And Fall from Grace then made me go listen to some Fear Factory. It tends to happen. A rock project comes out and I'm, I'm going back and listening to shit like that. It made me go listen to Metanoia from Low Key. It made me go listen to Blood of Izu from Low Key. So I wasn't properly in the right mindset for gospel. Especially with Chainsmoker 2 dropping around the same time as well. So... Keegan Grimm's Gospel, I think it's a really good project. I just, I've got to be in the right mindset and the right mode to give it a listen because it didn't sound bad. I just don't think I was in the right mindset for that when it dropped. But um, definitely going to be peeping that out one of these days when the, when the time is right. Uh, another project that dropped that I really only ever gave it like one or two listens and then I just kind of moved on from it. And it's kind of a similar thing where it's like, I just wasn't in the right mindset. I wasn't in the right mode. I wasn't on the right channel to listen to it. But Young Wicked dropped his second mixtape, uh, Young Wicked the mixtape, or the Young Wicked mixtape, I think is how it's properly called. I don't know why it's worded like that. But this dropped back on March 29th. And I'm trying to think what like significantly dropped around that same time that I just didn't really listen to it. I know Mission Infects Armageddon was out by then. I was obviously still revisiting Fall From Grace a lot. I, you know, again, Super Famous Fun Time Guys, is, I'll tell you when I want to laugh by laughing, was steady in rotation as well. It, it, it still was in my top five albums for March. So um, when Young Wicked's mixtape dropped, I gave it one list. I was like, yo, this ain't bad. It's it's Young Wicked. That's all I can say really about that is it's a Young Wicked album, which is a good thing if you like Young Wicked, and it's a bad thing if you don't like Young Wicked. I just think I wasn't really in Young Wicked mode to properly listen to it and enjoy it. And again, I, I wouldn't say it was bad. I just, I got done with it. I was like, okay, I heard this. Let's go back and let's keep listening to this stuff that dropped is pretty much where I was at. Mission Infect just fucking came like a fucking tsunami. And, you know, that kind of... That opened doors for me to want to go listen to artists like Bad Luck. It made me dip into more Gruesome, which Gruesome is a hell of a fucking dope fucking rapper if you've never listened to Gruesome. Um, but, yeah, so Young Wicked's mixtape, I gave it one listen. Uh, I think I actually might have given it a second listen. I just haven't really listened to it and really digested it if you will but i do remember thinking it was dope i, I remember thinking it was a good album it, it was good it's right in the vein with all of his other projects he put out i don't think that any of them sucked it's just you know again it dropped when other shit dropped and that shit was hotter so uh, another one that i gave one listen to i don't even think i made it fully through the album i think i made it like to the fourth or fifth track and this is the one where i'm probably going to catch the most heat from Again, not my cup of tea, not really my thing. So I, I, this was definitely like an obligatory listen when I did it. But Ouija Mac and Darby O'Trill dropped Anamoya. Is that how you pronounce it? Anamoya? An Anamo? And I don't know. I'm going to stop fucking butchering it before people on YouTube start making fun of me. Um, I listened. I think I made it to maybe Dark Moon Talisman on my first listen and I just stopped it. I was like, I don't, it was, I was basically forcing myself to listen to it. And the biggest reason that I did that was, and this is where I want to give praise for this album, right? Darby O'Trill signs to chapter 17 last year. Last year, Long Live Evil drops Lost Lake Estates. I've given that album so much praise saying that it's like a Tales from the Lotus Pod type vibe. And to me, that that album really kicked off a family era for Long Live Evil. So when they announced Ouija Mac and Darby O'Trill doing this collab album, it was super similar. And to me, it felt important to give it a listen because I feel the same way. I feel like Chapter 17, with the addition of Darby O'Trill, and unfortunately they lost Hex, 
they would have if they would have kept hex and had hex on this i think that would have significantly had more impact as well but to me Anamoya was was the same kind of thing it was a group album from this label to kind of usher in a new era for them uh, obviously, I don't really know what the relationship between Dario Trill and Ouija Mac is. I do feel like there's a stronger brotherhood between the folks on Long Live Evil. Uh, similarly to, you know, how ICP, Twisted, and Blaze kind of had it back in the day. But, you know, looking at that circumstance, eventually 15 years later, or how many of years later since Tails dropped, you know, there was a split. Um, when I look at Darby O'Trill and Ouija Mac, I feel like it's more of a business relationship than like an actual brotherhood. And I could be misspeaking on that big time. I, again, I don't know much about them. I don't know how much they knew each other prior to being label mates, you know, prior to Ouija Mac being, you know, the boss, prior to Ouija Mac signing him to Chapter 17. I don't know what their relationship or working relationship was. Um, I know Long Live Evil has like rooted fucking history together they all do they all kind of came from the same crowd they're all from ohio they're all you know they're all kind of interconnected through low key he's like the seeds of the fucking underground at this point so i know there's a stronger bond with them and i'm getting off on a tangent but i did feel like animoya was like an usher into the chapter 17 family era which i think is really cool and significant significant to see two entities in the underground like this ushering in their own family era it makes me excited for the future uh i will say and i will go on record saying i don't think that chapter 17 is the future of the wicked shit and i don't think long live evil is the future of the wicked shit i think collectively they both are and eventually if we can get to a point where we can bridge that gap would be even better for the underground but there are, there are folks out there that don't really want to see that happen. There's agents of chaos out there that will constantly, you know, rip apart any fucking bridges that are starting to be made. Uh, but Anamoya, I listened to it kind of obligatory because I felt like it was going to usher in a family era for Chapter 17. But ultimately, it's just not my cup of tea. And, you know, I, I want people to know I did try. I did try. I always try to go into new Ouija Mac projects with an open mind, but I never, sometimes I don't make it very far. And sometimes I do. Obviously I enjoyed Dirtbag. Obviously I enjoyed Fallen Angelic. So sometimes it happens. Corruptus even, I enjoyed Corruptus. Sometimes it just doesn't click. Um, another album that dropped, and this is one that I, I kind of listened to maybe one or two times. And it's another one of those situations where it's like, it's not bad. It's just, I'm not amazed by it. And, you know, being what it is, it is kind of just there for me. But Twisted dropped their Cryptic Collection 5. Finally, the full thing. The time capsules all came out. We got the full project. Everything on here, I think, sounds good. Some of these songs I know have been previously released before, whether through VIP or, or um, you know, certain events. So I know people have heard them all before. The thing I like about Cryptic Collection 5 is it gives those play it gives those things a home if you don't already have it. The what is it called? The uh God, what was the name of the EP that dropped right after Continuous Evolution of Life's Questions? Question marks, whatever the hell that album <laughs> album's title is. Uh what was that called? I think I could look right here on the track list and it will tell me because one of the tracks Psychomania. The Psychomania EP essentially exists now on Cryptic Collection 5. So for people who don't have that EP or have never heard that EP, they can get that now through Cryptic Collection 5. Um, what I like about this collection is it gives all of those songs a home. As I listened through them, I thought everything sounded really good. But, you know, when it came to New Twisted, this was not what I was listening to. I was actually kind of gearing up for other things. Because if I remember correctly, Cryptic Collection 5 dropped, what, May 3rd. And that might have been close to the time that they announced they're going on tour with Coal Chamber. And when that happened, uh, Coal Chamber and Fear Factory, I want to emphasize Fear Factory. That got me excited because I'm a big Fear Factory fan, for, for those who don't know. Uh, it had me super duper excited because you know, I really love Fear Factory, would love to see Fear Factory, especially with their new singer, Milo. Uh, I think that's going to be a great set to go see. Obviously, Twisted's going to be on there. And I knew immediately going into that that they were going to be performing a lot of their rock shit. And so when that happened, I finally went and listened to Unlikely Prescription, and it clicked. I had listened to that album a few times and just did not care for it. 
but it finally clicked after that announcement and i just started listening to the shit out of unlikely prescription it actually was like my top album for may because of it but uh yeah cryptic question five again it's a good collection it's what those albums are for the songs on there i did find myself enjoying but it was also kind of like i didn't feel like i was obligated to listen to it to drop a review i just i gave it my couple of spins and then just went back to what i wanted to listen to which was twisted rocking the fuck out which i was enjoying at the time which is kind of rare a lot of twisted fans a lot of juggalos don't seem to be doing that right now uh, i'm kind of an oddball when it comes to that as you as you probably gathered by this video i enjoyed corruptus I enjoyed Unlikely Prescription. I like when artists experiment. Uh, I'm an odd one, if you will. Uh, and then another one, the last one that I'm going to leave off this first episode of uh, Flavor of the Month. I had someone reach out to me. I don't remember their name. They reached out to me on my Facebook page. And then they asked if I would listen to their new album and potentially do a review. Uh, I listened to it one time. I did not go back and listen to it yet. Again, there's other things that I'm like listening to right now and around the time that they reached out to me i was really starting to dive into some dirty obviously i was still diving into a lot of gruesome gruesome really hit he put out a new album which i would talk about on here but i actually want to do a full review for the the new gruesome's locker ep um so i'm not talking about it here but it dropped pretty much i i, I want to say it dropped not long after cryptic collection 5 did it was sometime in may i know that um so when these guys reached out to me i did give it a listen i didn't think it was bad not bad at all it's labeled as alternative rap there's elements of rap rock a little bit of pop i would say because there is some harmonizing on there as well it sounded good to me but you know i i couldn't get myself to go back and listen to it again at the time just because of everything else i was starting to dive into it just wasn't the right time um but the guy that reached out to me wanted me to do a review he wanted to know like my top songs and i just i could not deliver that um, but i wanted to talk about it here the group is called i'm gonna butcher this abica it's a b i c a and the album they dropped is called 13 um you know and i'll flash artwork as we go through but this album was a surprise to me because i didn't know it was coming out i didn't know nothing about these guys i, I knew nothing but it features songs with Jamie Madrox, with Monoxide. They've even got Head P.E. on there. And when I saw that, I was like, whoa, who are these guys? Like, completely slid under my radar. Um, in the Underground Podcast Community Discord server, I actually put out there, has anybody heard of these guys? I have them asking me to do a review, and I had never heard of them. And Mike Spawn was one of the first ones to go, whoa, I haven't heard those guys in forever. So apparently they, they've been around before, but going on their, like, going on streaming... This is the only album I could find for them. Uh, and again, it wasn't bad sounding. I was just focused on listening to other things at the time. A lot of dirty, a lot of gruesome. Um, th that's just what happened. So, um, but yeah, it, it sounded pretty good to me. I couldn't even give you a, a top song. I literally only listened to it to one time. And I listened to it right after he said, hey, will you listen to this? And so I listened to it immediately after that finished it and <laughs> just went back to listening to some gruesome so that is what happened but it sounded good from what i heard uh, but there you guys go this is the first episode of flavor of the month again next month probably won't have nearly as many albums that we're going to talk about it might be a little bit shorter so i may or may not do like a throwback flavor and and do kind of a review if you will of an older album or you know just highlight older albums these are not replacing reviews reviews are still going to happen these are just if i'm listening to new music but i don't force myself to listen to them to do a review it's it's a way for me to still highlight the artists and the new music that they put out uh, and show some love to them um, but it's going to be things that i did not do reviews for or it's going to be things that um i lost my train of thought there uh, it's going to be basically things that I didn't do a review for, and they, I want them to more or less be new albums. I don't, you know, I, I want to still do reviews. I'm just trying to make it easier on myself to not feel such an obligation to film a review. Because it's, it's kind of ruined some of my listening experiences on certain albums. Like, the UGA album just dropped. I listened to it, I made it three songs in, and I just stopped it. And I went back and started listening to the new fun, uh, Super Famous Fun Time Guys 
um, compilation album, scrapped album, if you will. It's called They Wouldn't Let Us Film Here, Volume 1. I've been gravitating to that right now, as well as the new Dirty album that just dropped. Just who in the hell do I think I am? So, you know, Underground Avengers is, is another one of those things where I, like, I feel like I need to do a review for, but it might suffer the fate of it dropped around the same time as other stuff. So it may kind of get lost in the sauce and maybe it'll be featured on next month's flavor of the month. But anyway, any of these albums that I talked about, tell me down below what you like about them. Tell me what you don't like about them. Remember to be respectful always. And anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.